Hello tankers and tankettes, time for another view of Spotlight and this has been sent in to me by Scud75 who is probably more familiar to views of the stream as Fu was here, he's uh, quite a regular watcher and yeah he's sent me this, it's a replay of the SU-100Y which is um, it, it's basically a, a shed with a naval gun attached to it and it has about as much armour but it I don't have one myself, but I, I know from the test server, it, it turns like a whale, but it goes in a straight line surprisingly fast. Um, yeah, this is going to be <laughs> an interesting game, <laughs> shall we say. So, but yeah, basically it's a, a, a big blunderbuss of a gun this thing has got. It's pretty accurate, and when it came out, I and I think a few other people as well were worried that it was going to be a bit too troll a bit too overpowered for tier 6 but actually it's it's not really proved to be um, I'd, well maybe it's just the fact that you don't see that many of them because it is it, it has no armor and it is a huge huge target I'm, I'm say it, it, anytime you go into battle in a, a, a tank with a really big gun and uh, you, know, you know no armor that automatically makes you priority number one for a lot of players which is you know fair enough but it can be difficult playing such tanks so that that may be why you don't see that many of them anyway um, there's been a bit of a lemming train to the south so uh, I think he's being a he's not quite decided what to do but he's gonna try and support the northern flank now this is interesting matchmaking given that it's mostly tier fives two tier sixes on each team and then a tier seven and normally if you're in a you know it, it, if you're in a top tier tag in this situation it's it's pretty godlike uh, oh that's oh oh whoa wait what blind kill <laughs> nice um yeah that's pretty nice but unfortunately the lemming uh, the lemmings all, all went uh, in one direction their team most of their team actually went to the north uh, wow yeah you see that this thing is um, painful. Uh, oh, scouting coming. Uh, you'll note, by the way, he started off with the uh, premium ammo, which has less penetration but does more damage. Oh, unlucky. I think he, he could have... He, he, he may have been a bit panicked at this point because getting circled by a T-50-2. Bad news, but this guy hasn't actually managed to hit him. Instead of going for him, he goes for this Crusader instead, who frankly is not doing very well. Oh. There we go, another miss, he pulled back just in time. But this Crusader uh, was not much use. Um, so yeah, the, the Fu clearly uh, is not trusting this Crusader to take care of this guy, so he is... Um, there we go. He's going to take care of him himself. Because, yeah, sometimes you can trust your teammates to deal with a tank. Other times, uh, yeah, it, it becomes apparent that that is a really bad idea. Now the north is collapsing, there's still the IS, he's still got full health but he's outnumbered and he's taking a bit of a battering so Fu's actually heading back and um, yeah, I, I, the one criticism I would make here is that with uh, yeah, yes the premium shells do more damage and I can see why he switched to use them at the beginning but he ends up wasting them on a few targets where it, it's really unnecessary um, and, and where they might be uh, might, might have been more useful later on. So this is one where it's, uh, yeah, Crusader with 168 health. Bam! Gone! But a regular shell, or even an HE shell, would have done that just as well. And now he's only got two premium shells left. So, uh, yeah, that, but that is the sole criticism I, I would make about uh, what Fu is doing here. So, um, yeah, the Lemmings have died, which is a massive, massive shock to anyone who uh, has ever seen a living train before. So it was basically Fu and a, a pair of lower tier tank destroyers now trying to defend the friendly cap. Uh, he doesn't want to go too far forward because, like I've said, this thing has got all the armour of a shed. And, ooh, out. Yeah, um, there's a couple of tank destroyers down there, which could be pretty dangerous. The SC-35A, probably the most. Depends what gun he's got. But the the um, SU-85 also. Well, the SU-85 is going to be a tricky bugger. But 
uh, yeah, even though he significantly outguns any of these guys, he's going to be really lucky if his shots uh, actually... Oh, 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 is he going to... Yes, there we go. Uh, but he's got a... Yeah, that SU-85 was actually doing a pretty good job. Um, just waiting for him to fire, because he, the, the reload on this thing is reasonably long as well. And this is pretty much the worst situation you can be in in uh, an SU-100Y. Uh, trying to, you know, face off against enemies um, that outnumber you, even if you can significantly outgun them. So, uh, oh, oh, that bounce. Oh, that is unlucky. Uh, yeah, so we're 710, and this team has, they've done some damage, but they've, pre they've, you know, the top tiers have crumbled pretty hard, and it was just that lemming train effect, basically. So take a look at the southern end. Um, well, we're all on the south of the map. The um, the other end of the map, I should say, the southeast corner. Look at that AT2. Now keep your eye on that AT2. Bam! There we go. SU-85 gone. Uh, Stug unfortunately is dead, and Fu's just oh taken more hits. A couple of lucky bounces there though. But uh, the KV-1 um, and the T-50, if they were both playing smart, could take him. The KV-1's moving up, perhaps hoping to flank. And luckily for Fu, this T-50 player is really bad. So, into the back of the KV-1, bam, six kills. This T-50 does not know what he's doing. It, he's... I mean, the Fu is now alone, and we know there's a T-25 around somewhere. The AT-2 is tangling with a Black Prince. I'm pretty sure the AT-2 had the derp gun, but don't uh, quote me on that. Um, Fu is, um, yeah, he doesn't really want to go forward for this guy because he, he's, there's no way he's going to outturn the T-50. And this is an 8.6 replay, so this was the T-50 before it had the nerf of uh, 8.7. So he he's very hesitant to do that. Oh, oh, and this is bad news. It's a KV-1S. Oh, oh, this, oh, wow, okay, that was lucky. Oh, oh, yes, burn. Burn your bugger! Burn! Now notice he's got his back to the T-50. Is the T-50 taking advantage of this? No. KV-1S is... Oh, well. He didn't burn out, unfortunately. He clearly didn't have a fire extinguisher. But, ah, uh, 100 health is... Yeah. This is a significant problem now. And I think Fu has figured out that this T-50 driver does not have a clue what he's doing. Because he's... He spends... The, the, there is so much time here when this T-50 could have um, quite easily popped out. And yes, the T-50 gun is far from amazing, but uh, four shots maybe? And there's no way Fu could turn in time to actually get him. But instead he's doing this. He's playing peekaboo with an SU-100Y around a rock. Yeah, this this guy is... Fortunately, very, very fortunately for Fu, this guy is not really aware of what you can do in a T-50. So, it's still a bad situation, there's a T-25 un unaccounted for, low health KV-1S, and the T-50, and even a really incompetent T-50, um, if he starts shooting at Fu's side while he's trying to hit the KV-1S. Yeah, this is this is very bad, because you, you, you're trying to divide your attention between multiple uh, directions at once, oh, it, it's really very difficult. So this KV-1S is doing the right thing here. He's trying to push up. But the AT-2, who... know how much health he's got left. And that he took down a Black Prince. This AT-2 did a heroic job. So he's just getting in place, and... Bam! <laughs> Seven kills. And it's just the T-50 left, and the T-25. T-25, we know where we was, he was last seen, but we haven't seen him since which is kind of curious. So, we're just waiting now for the AT-2 to get over here, because Fu's being smart, and he knows this T-50 is just sitting behind a rock. And if he tries and ch tries to chase it around the rock, that's not going to work. Even the, you know, worst player in the world is not just going to sit there and let you drive around a rock. Um, but, uh, yeah, he, he knows at least that the T-50 isn't going to come forward at him and try and use his speed and his turning to an advantage. 
So he's got that going for him, and yeah, has seven kills, and uh, the eighty-two's got three kills. You know, this has been a pretty um, a pretty hard carry between the pair of them. I should mention also, if you're wondering how it is that Fui is zoomed out so much, uh, this is actually part of. Uh, I think it's the Jimbo's crosshair mod, which Fu is clearly using. You can, uh, you don't have to have it on, but you can enable it so that you get extra zoom out. And I actually use it myself, not for in battle purposes, but because it's really, really useful when I'm doing these screen grabs at the end of um, at the end of my videos. It just gives you a bit of extra to play around with, basically. But there are some combat situations where that, that's quite useful. So this T-50 has actually run away. He's used the cover of the rock and he's been able to get away without Fu spotting him. So... Yeah, he's... he's um, wanting the AT-2 to sit here and defend. And... Uh, oh, there's that T-25. Now he's been there the whole time. That's where he was last spotted, so he either had to leave the battle, or his client crashed, or goodness knows what, but he's just sat there, basically. Uh, yeah, so that, that that's good, because it's one less to deal with, but goodness knows what happened to that guy. Anyway, T-50 is a problem. Uh, he's not really an issue for the AT-2. He's going to not really pen the AT-2, but if he gets up close to Fu, then Fu is in big trouble. So, bear in mind, like I've said, this thing actually moves all right for its bulk. Um, 35 kmh is not bad. Um, that, that's kind of comparable to a fast heavy tank, or even a slow medium. So he's going to try and get to the cap. And he's going to take a route which exposes his sides and rear, and hopefully stops him being spotted. 82 maybe should have stuck around the friendly cap to try and prevent the the T50 from capping. There, I mean, there is still time at this point for one one lone tank to cap, but he's actually trundling up north. And that might leave a route open for the T-50 to get through if he's thinking smart. But we know the T-50 driver isn't particularly good. So it's risky, but it maybe isn't that risky. Oh, all these smoking corpses. I, I just, I'm so impressed by that AT-2. Taking down a Black Prince on his own. And, you know, the AT-2 has got fantastic armor, but up close, the weak spots are very easy to hit. The Black Prince has got good armor itself, it's got a good gun, it's accurate enough to hit the AT-2's weak spots, and he sure as hell, um, you know, the Black Prince is not the fastest tank ever, but it can still flank an AT-2. But somehow the AT-2 beat him. <laughs> I, I would almost as much like to see the replay of that guy, just for that moment there, because that was some seriously impressive stuff. So here we are approaching the cap. Uh, this T50 is, I don't know, maybe just hiding at this point. He's, I yeah, I I don't know what was going through the guy's mind. Uh, the 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 it's one of those situations where somebody's action or inaction has basically completely turned the tide of the battle, and in this case, it, the T50 has quite possibly lost their team of the battle. So here we go. Aiming, there he is. It was, I don't know. He wasn't even sitting at the back hide or anything. But, bam! There we go. With one minute and 23, 24 seconds to spare, we've won. Twelve kills between them, and uh, quite a hefty amount of luck. Um, you know, I, I do count if you come up against uh, a player that really, really doesn't know what they're doing and lets you get away with so much. That definitely counts as luck in my book. But, uh, you know, that said, you still have to react to that situation and you still have to... Um, you, you still have to, to make the right decisions based on that knowledge. And Fu did a pretty good job. He, he took the risks and it, it paid off pretty handsomely. Um, if it had been down to, you know, if that T50 driver had had any clue, uh, he could have taken out Fu. He could have capped 
probably before the 82 had managed to get back in time. Um, he, he, he really could have changed the course of the battle, and instead he just happened to be the last one to die. <laughs> so there you go. Um, it, it just goes to show that uh, some battles really do come down to one pivotal moment, and making the right decision at that pivotal moment can make or break a team, basically. But as it was, that was a pretty good carry. Uh, Fu did some pretty good damage. Um, Profit was, you know, okay. But, uh, of course, firing those premium shells, uh, he could have made more. I mean, he spent 30, over 30k um, and j just on the shells. And, you know, was it worth it? Some of those shots, possibly not. So that that is like like I said, my only criticism is that maybe uh, selecting when to use what shells could have been done a bit better. But otherwise, I think that was a pretty decent game. So if you enjoyed this video, you can hit the like button. You can even subscribe to my channel, and of course, as always, stay tuned for more.